Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Mr. Wiz here. If you are new here, we build video games. So we've already finished a whole series on how to build video games in Make Code Arcade. If you haven't checked those out, you might want to do so. It's about 30 videos, a whole lot of good content there for you. Now we're working our way through extensions, which allow us to enhance our games in some pretty unique ways. Today, we're looking at the Sprite Data Extension. So what's behind me right now is the program that I used in a couple videos. We first started this program when learning about loops, and then later we returned to it when learning about arrays. So this was meant to be a kind of a knockoff Space Invaders type game where we learned we used loops to create the characters, and then we used arrays, which allowed us to pattern them out in these colors, and it was pretty cool. Now this game is not finished. As you can tell when I shoot, nothing happens. So before we get to the extension, let me just real quickly add something to my game here so that when I shoot, it will actually destroy those aliens. My projectiles are projectile type. So when the projectile overlaps with the enemies, which I never actually set those up as enemies, and they're still called ducks because I never changed their name after turning them into aliens. But let's go ahead and set them up as enemies and... When the projectile hits an enemy, I want it to destroy that enemy. Now, to destroy the specific enemy, I have to use the other sprite variable, which is something we talked about before. This ensures that when the projectile hits the enemy, it's destroying the enemy and not just some random one on the screen. So now if I test that out, it should now destroy the aliens. And it does. It is destroying too many of them, though. So to keep my game a little bit more challenging... Let's also make it so it can only destroy one at a time by destroying the projectile as well. So when the projectile hits an enemy, it's going to destroy the projectile and destroy the enemy. So now I've got a basic building blocks of a Space Invader style game where one shoot, one shot, one kill for each enemy. All right, so now let's talk about sprite data and how I'm going to use it to improve this game. So using this overlap block with the projectile and the enemy, destroying the sprite and the other sprite, this works great for a simple game where it's one hit, one kill, like I just demonstrated. That's fine. But what if I wanted my game to be not a simple game? What if I wanted to go to the next level um, here? This is what extensions are great at, is helping us go to that next level. So what if I wanted my enemies to have more lives? What if I didn't want them to get destroyed with a single hit? I could, theoretically, create variables um, that keeps track of their health, but with so many enemies on the screen, how many enemies was it at the beginning of the game here? There's four rows, uh, looks like seven each, so that's 28 enemies. I would essentially have to create 28 variables. I would have to give them all separate names so I could keep track of which ones for which enemies. That's a big chore. That's a lot of work. So what we're going to do is we're going to simplify that process using the sprite data extension. So in the extensions area, if you scroll down here, the one with the little duck says Arcade Sprite Data. This is the extension that we're going to use. What this extension allows you to do is it allows you to save information to the sprite. Essentially, it's like creating variables that are unique to the individual sprite. So in this case, we're going to create a life variable that is unique to each sprite and keeps track of its own data. So each sprite will have its own score to keep track of, its own life to keep track of. And it's actually not that hard once you really take a look at it. So when we added the extension to the game, it did not show up in the toolbox. It is in the sprite section where all the other sprite stuff is. You're going to find it down at the bottom. Most extensions, when you add them, add to the bottom if they add to an existing toolbar. Okay. So here's our data. It's at the bottom of the sprite section. There's a lot of blocks here. And I'm going to be honest with you, most of these I've never used. Um, but there are some that are pretty useful. We're going to be focusing mostly for this program on the number one. So let's go ahead and get started. What we're going to do is I'm going to grab this block that says set data to number. And I'm going to put this block down in the area where I created the enemies. So down here I have some loops. And this is creating my enemies, which are right now called the ducks, because when I first created the program, there were ducks. So I'm going to put this in the same area where the ducks get created. So after the ducks get created and we're setting their position and everything else, I'm going to set 
the duck. So this is for the individual duck because remember it makes them one at a time. The way, we, the way we made this program with the loops, it makes each duck, which is now an alien, one at a time, right? So it creates the duck from the array. It sets the duck to the duck's data and we're going to name the data. So this is the same way you would name a variable. So I'm just going to name it life. So we're giving the duck a data that is called life. We're giving it a personal variable that's called life. And we're setting that to however many lives we want each one to have. Let's say three. So we're going to give each alien three lives. So that's what we just did with this block. So now as it's creating them, every single one of those aliens on the screen now has a data point saved to it, which is called life. And that data point is currently set to three. So when I shoot them here with the overlap block where the projectile hits the enemy, instead of destroying the enemy, we're now going to have it change. So down to the data section, change the data called life by negative one. Now, right now it says item. I don't want to put ducks in here because I need to make sure it does it for the correct duck, right? So remember what we learned about temporary variables up here, the sprite and other sprite? I'm going to put other sprite there. So now what this code says is when a sprite that is a projectile, which is the lasers that we're shooting, when a sprite that is a projectile overlaps with another sprite that is an enemy, it's going to destroy the projectile sprite and change the other sprite, the enemy's data that is called life, by negative one. So that enemy will essentially lose one life. Pretty straightforward, right? Now, once they run out of lives, I need them to get destroyed. So after this happens, I'm gonna put a logic block in here. And this logic block is going to say, I'm gonna use the equals block there. The logic block is going to say, if the item data as number. So I'm going to put that in this logic block right here. If, once again, I have to use other sprite. If that other sprite, if that enemy's data that is called life, so if that data called life as a number is equal to zero. Now, just to help prevent bugs, I'm actually going to use less than or equal to zero. Because what if I accidentally hit it with two projectiles at the same time? and it becomes a negative number. It ends up becoming negative one. I don't want this to not work, right? So I'm gonna put less than or equal to zero just to help prevent those bugs. But really, it should be happening at zero. But just in case it misses it, I'm putting less than or equal to. So let's look at this again. When a projectile sprite overlaps with an enemy sprite or the other sprite, destroy the projectile, change the other sprite's data called life by negative one, if the other sprite's data called life as negative one is less than or equal to zero, then we destroy it. So then we can grab that destroy block and destroy other sprite. So let's test it out. Basically, we created a variable, a personal variable for the sprite, for each of those enemy sprites that is set to three when they get created. And once it goes down to zero, they should be destroyed. So let's test it out. I'm going to shoot this first one here. If I can hit it, oh, I think I hit the second one. Here we go, I hit the first one that time. You notice they're not dying right away, right? So I hit it once, I think. So this should be the second hit, yep. Let's hit it one more time. Boom, he's dead. Took three hits to take him out. And it should be the same thing with some of these other ones. I already hit this one a couple times, I think. Oh, I'm bad with timing it. There we go. So all these guys now have three health. And as I'm playing the game, it's gonna take me a lot longer to defeat them all because each one now has three health instead of one. And it seems to be working very, very well here. So this is a great way to increase the difficulty of your games simply by giving enemies health. Now, is that the only thing you can do with sprite data? Absolutely not. So let's go look at the other blocks that were in there. Other data you can save. Um, you can save... This one's kind of weird. Basically allows you to save one sprite to another sprite. I don't know why you would do that. Um, the Boolean one's kind of cool. So let's say there's like an item in your game. This is the main reason I would use it. But let's say there's something in your game that could change 
what the player is capable of doing, right? Maybe there's a weapon that they pick up that gives them some new ability they didn't have before. Maybe they find a key that unlocks a special door in the game. Maybe there's a potion that allows them to do some sort of special ability, right? So you can set data and name it whatever you would, like name it key, for instance. And then when they pick up that key, it will set the data called key to true. So you have true and false here, right? So if they have the key, it would be true. If they don't have the key, it would be false. And then later on, when they touch that locked door, you can use this logic block, which pulls it and basically pulls it whether it's true or not, right? So if it's true, then the door would unlock. And if it's not true, then the door wouldn't unlock. You guys get the idea, right? So this is cool for saving data to a particular individual or a particular change. Now, normally, if I was building a single player game, I wouldn't worry about that because you can do it without arcades data, right? You can have your own variable that you create to keep track of that stuff if you wanted to. But what if you're doing a multiplayer game? What if you have more than one playable character in your game? You might need to keep track of who's holding the key or who's holding the potion. So this might be useful in a situation like that, right? Um, so strings is for care is for you know text based stuff. I don't really use that in this particular circumstances. The image one is one of those that I don't find particularly useful, but you can use it if you want to. So for instance, maybe you want to set an image for different settings the player might have, right? So maybe you have an image for when he's sitting or an image for when he's jumping or an image for when he's doing certain tasks. And then when the player is doing those tasks in the game, you can set that task as the image. So I would name it based on what they're doing, right? So I would name it the image jump or name the image sit or whatever the case may be. And then you can just pull it when you need it. So that's the basic idea. But the main thing that I use this for is the numbers. Um, but yes, there are other options available. Feel free to play around with that. And that's all I wanted to say about this today. So if you learned something new today, please make sure you hit that like button to show off, uh, you know, to show me that you learned something new. And if you built something using this extension, please share it with me in the comments by clicking that share button right there. As always, I hope you're already subscribed. If you're not, please subscribe. And don't forget to tell your friends and family about this page so we can continue to grow and we can learn and build fun games together. Until next time, have a great rest of your day.